the uh, was a fold of the axilla and the axilla the fold you check okay yes, was the hands on the sides or on the waist sorry sir on the waist or on the side side the sir they were on the side for relaxing and then for totting uh, they were on the waist sir waist okay and uh, how did you check for the fixation to the supposedly it would have been on the uh, outer quadrant or lower outer quadrant which muscle i am it is uh, it could be in serratus anterior could be involved sir if it is in the lower outer quadrant how do you make it taut uh, sir to uh, for serratus anterior we ask the patient to push against a wall sir and uh, then check the fixity of the lump okay so in this case your case like this so the lump was also in the nipple area or underneath the nipple area complex the lump was mainly in the lower outer quadrant and also just below the sir nipple area complex okay so uh, what are the signs of the involvement of the skin overlying skin uh, it could be ulceration Uh, 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 ulceration, satellite nodules could be there, or a pudy orange appearance. Sir. My patient has a pudy orange appearance. So ulceration means so what type of ulceration? See, there can be also pressure necrosis at times. Have yes. you ever? Okay, how do you differentiate between the two then? I don't know, sir. Okay, so. let us come to the axillary any other questions from any other examiner yeah biji did you say that you will feel the breast with the three fingers <clears throat> did you say that yes in the first setting you will palpate with the three fingers like you are going to palpate it with the three fingers no sir mainly with the tip of my fingers i no never you know if you feel it with the three fingers in the tip of the fingers in all breast you will feel a lump okay so the first palpation is always to be the flat of the hand okay sir okay once you find there is a lump in the breast is there with the flat of the hand then you are going to use your fingers and the thumb to see for that okay you yes, never start with the tip of the fingers at the first hand for the palpation how yes. do you check whether the lump is t4b or not uh, sir t4b means the, that the patient uh, the size of the lump is more than 5 cm and 4b uh, means that it is involving the skin sir okay and you told the three things for that you eh, know yes sir you... the pudy orange may be there yes sir there may be ulceration may be there there may be satellite nodule yes. no retraction no dimpling no it is will not, not change the stage no yes. and how do you check for the t4a so t4a means fixity to the chest wall which uh, includes the serratus anterior and uh, intercostal muscles and ribs sir. so how do you say this lump may be a t4a lesion uh, sir for to check for the fixity to the chest wall we will uh, ask the patient to sir press against the wall if it is fixed Uh, we will move the lump sideways, both sideways, and if it is fixed, sir, uh, then uh, we can say that it is fixed to the serratus anterior. If the lump in the upper quadrant is there, or medial quadrant is there, you are going to check it for the serratus anterior. Sir, I did not get the question, sir. Where are you getting the maximum lumps in the breast? Which quadrant? Upper outer quadrant, sir. Okay, so in the upper outer quadrant, you will do the testing for the serratus anterior. No, sir. Pectoralis muscle can be involved in the upper outer quadrant. Pectoral muscle is the chest wall. No, no, sir. Then, then how will you say that lump is the T four A lump? You understand my question or not? Yes, sir. T four A means it is fixed to the chest wall. Yes. Sir. So, what are the clinical signs to say that it is fixed to the chest wall? I don't know, sir. No, the lump is not moving, 
anywhere in the breast, if the lump is not moving, you are not able to move the lump. That is fixed to the chest wall. Okay, okay lump to the pectoral will move. But a lump which is to the chest wall is there will not move. Yes. Sir. While a lump which is there in the lower outer quadrant which is there, which is over the serratus anterior, there the lump may be mobile. But then you have to test that for that serratus anterior. And if it is fixed to that, then again it is a T4A lesion. Okay. Yes. Sir. Where do you feel for the infratemporal group of the lymph nodes? Uh, Where do you feel that? Uh, Infraclavicular group of the lymph nodes. The infraclavicular are uh, sir, uh, central and apical group of lymph nodes. No, uh, no, I'm not talking the axillary nodes. I'm asking the infraclavicular group. The you know, there's a supraclavicular is there, and yeah. also there is infraclavicular is also there. I don't know. Sir. You know, in the TNM staging, infraclavicular also comes. Abhijit, you know it. Why are you telling I don't know? What are the group of lymph nodes you will be examining? Uh, sir, I will examine in the anterior axillary fold, I will examine the pectoral group. Good. Uh, along with them, uh, I will also examine the uh, posterior axillary fold will be subscapular group of lymph nodes. Good. Uh, sir, brachial group along the upper end of humerus, I will palpate. And the central and the apical group in the apex of axilla. More in the apical will be more in the apex of axilla. What is this apical group actually? How is it palpated? Sir, uh, our fingers are, sir, patient is sitting position and uh, uh, I will with the, uh, I will insinuate my fingers in the axilla and uh, with, on deep insinuation and uh, with the tip of the fingers, they are palpated, sir. Palpated. So what will be your other hand doing? Sir, uh, patients, if my patient has a left, so left hand of the patient will rest on my right hand uh, and uh, sir, uh, right hand will be the, it will uh, be ex the examining the apical group, sir. Your left hand will be somewhere in the deltopectoral group. Why? I told you the answer also. Apical group you are trying to examine. And sir asked about the infraclavicular group. Usually these are the apical groups. Got my point? So that's a five manual palpation you'll be doing. Yes. One hand, right hand, you'll be insinuating, and the left hand, you'll be pressing on the deltopectoral group. Yes, sir. That's the infraclavicular. Yes, sir. Is it uh, normally palpable like that with your left hand? Why it is not normally palpable? Mm -hmm. What obstructs actually? What is present over there? Which was here? Sorry, sir. Which fossa or a tough layer is present over there? Deltopectoral group. Delto what is present over there anteriorly? The subclavius muscle. Clavipectoral fossa. Yes. That sir. is why you do not easily palpate that. So bimanual palpation will be helping. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, you can continue, sir. Okay. I have one question. In for the group of the lymph nodes, you feel okay on the lateral side below the clavicle where the concavity is there. You can feel the nodes there, and sometimes these nodes are confused with the rotor nodes. You know, rotor nodes are the nodes which are there in the interpectoral groove between the pectoris major and the pectoris minor. Okay, so that is the place where you feel for the infraclavicular group of the lymph nodes. Where can you feel the internal memory group of the lymph nodes? Uh, sir, media, they are palpated medially along the sir, lateral boundaries of the uh, sternum. Can you feel the lymph nodes? No, sir. Normally. Internal memory? No, so sir. what do you find? How can you say clinically that this patient has got the enlarged internal memory group of the lymph nodes? Clinically. Obliteration of the intercostal space or the bulging of the intercostal space. You will not be able to feel any separate lump, but if the bulge is there or the obliteration is there, 
and if you percuss the parasternal area, you will find the dullness is there. So in a patient who has got a lump on the medial side of the breast, you may check for that. And these are the, there is no direct sign for that, okay, that you are able to feel the lymph nodes. But it is only the fullness in that area or there is a parasternal dullness is there. That may suggest that there may be probably the internal memory group of the lymph nodes here. Did you examine the abdomen of this patient? Have you finished your examination, no? Yes, sir. Okay. What are the things did you look for in the abdomen? Uh, sir, in abdominal finding, we look for enlarged liver or any other palpable lump, sir, or ascites. What else? Uh, Anything in the parietal wall you can get? In the umbilicus? Uh, sir, uh, the, they are the nodules, uh, Joseph, uh, uh, sir, Joseph Mary. Sister sir. Joseph. Sister Joseph Mary nodule. Eh, no? Nodules, yes. Sir. All right. Anything else in the abdominal examination? Sir, in lower abdomen, uh, the, there are blummer shelf uh, uh, in the, the mets to the uh, sir, ovary. What is that mets to the ovaries called as? The blummer shell. Uh, no, no. Krukenberg, my dear. Yes, sir. Krukenberg. Krukenberg. So, what is the characteristic of a Krukenberg tumor? Will it occur in this age or not? Sorry, sir. Will in a patient of 60 years. Can you get the Krukenberg tumor or not? Okay, it is much more common in the premenopausal because the spread is by transcelomic spread. But it can occur also in the 60 years. And if you to explain that, it is the retrograde lymphatic spread is there. Okay, but much more common in the premenopausal patient. It's a bilateral tumor, and it's a solid tumor. Okay, these are three characteristics of that. Usually in the premenopausal, bilateral tumor and a solid tumor. Bloomer shelf is the rectal shelf. You, know? you do the distal rectal examination and then you see for that. Yes. Okay. All right. Avi, before proceeding for uh, further management and all this, so you examined the breast and the axilla also. Can you just define the 10 zones what you examine in case of a breast lump suspected to be a malignancy? Sequentially, what examination did you do? Uh, so first, uh, I examined the lump, the noted the, uh, noted the, uh, the, yes, first I examined the breast. In the breast, I saw the size of, size, shape, and uh, that's okay that means four quadrants of the breast you examine properly yes sir then, then i saw the skin over the breast sir. no then which zone did you examine nipple areola comp yes areola complex yes uh, or nipple areola complex i saw uh, nipple uh, retraction sir it's okay then then which zone did you see skin sir skin over the skin is okay in that zone you saw everything then the so four quadrants, nipple areola complex, thereafter, which area did you see? So after that, I examined the axilla. Don't you examine the axillary tail of Spain's area also? Can't a mass be also present over there, axillary tail of Spain's? Yes, sir. Yes, one should see. Then you saw the axilla also, palpated the axilla also. Then, which area did you see? Uh, sir, I examined the axilla. After that, I look for the supraclavicular nodes in the supraclavicular fossa. And uh, in axilla, I examined, sir, anterior axillary, posterior axillary fold. Then in the, uh, sir, break. Okay, details of the axilla. Then what did you examine? Then I examined the contralateral. Very uh, good. Breast and the axilla. Okay. 
Anything else will you like to examine also? No, man. Anything related to the ipsilateral side on the arm forearm will you like to also examine? You look for the lymphedema. Yes. Mm -hmm. so all these 10 zones, one should go sequentially so that one should not miss anything. Yes. Okay. I have one question for this boy. Hello. Sir, please carry on, sir. There is an upper abdominal scar. What was it for? Sir, it is a coronary artery bypass grafting done, sir. Such a big scar on the lower abdomen? I mean, upper abdomen? Usually, they have only two drains which are there. Yes, sir. Have you actually asked the patient any other surgery? No, sir. Only see, uh, sir, coronary artery bypass. Which are two drains, uh, sir? One in the left-sided inframe. I cannot see the drain scars at all. That's why. That's why I'm asking. Uh, sir, in this picture below the just below the breast on the left side, sir, uh, just below the inframammary crease, sir, there is a scar of the drain visible, sir. So why should be there a scar in the epigastric region for a CABG? Will it will it affect your treatment if there has gone something wrong? Or you are not interested? Sir, in terms of cardiac uh, cause or... No, no, no. I, I'm asking you, there is a scar there. I can see it's a, at least about, about 7 centimeters scar. Yes, and you have cropped the drainage site. Why did the cardiac surgeon have to take a big epigastric incision? That's that's my query. Or is it something else? Sir, it is only a scar of patient does not give any other history of any other sort of abdominal surgery. You have asked history of a retraction of nipple. You are planning surgery on this patient. See, clinical history and examination has a big role to play in managing the patients. I can ask you a lot of questions on your presentation. Uh, I can only tell you that you're well reading theory, but practically, I'm not very happy with you. Thank you so much. Abhijit, let us go to the management. Okay, now let us assume that it's a, you are telling that it's a malignant lock or a benign one? Uh, sir, uh, this is a pro uh, malignant lump, sir. Okay. So, why are you telling so? Tell few points quickly. Why are you telling so it's a malignant lump? Just um, yes, go on telling. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, the, uh, the lump is uh, the lump is of uh, size of 8 by 8 centimeter. Which benign can be also... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, on palpation, the lump is irregularly, uh, sir, irregularly defined and hard in consistency, sir, with okay. margins. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, it is it is associated with the lymph uh, uh, with the axillary lymph node. Is that all? So not fixed to the overlying skin. Will it also not? It is fixed to the skin and the sir underlying breast tissue, also. To the surrounding parenchyma, not the underlying breast tissue. Yes, surrounding parenchyma. Yes, sir. Why does it fix to the surrounding parenchyma? Sir, because of desmoplastic reaction. Okay. Okay, let us assume now it's a case of an elderly female with a, a malignant, suspected malignant breast lump. How will you approach in this case? Uh, sir, first, uh, I have done my history and clinical examination. Then I will go for radiology. Uh, in radiology, I will go for a mammography of the bilateral breast and ultrasonography of bilateral axilla. Okay. How will this ultrasonography of bilateral axilla help you? Uh, sir, to check the axillary lymph node status. My, uh, lymph, uh, the clin my patient has a clinically palpable lymph nodes. So, to confirm my inspectory and palpatory findings, I will go for a Supposingly, clinically, you are not able to palpate any nodes in the axilla. Isn't it sufficient to tell that it is an NG row disease? No, sir. We I we have to do a, a, a ultrasonography of axilla also bilaterally. 
Okay, good. So mammography, actually, if you see, what is a sonomammography then? Sir, sonomammography is combined mammography with ultrasonography. Has it got any advantage over a mammography? Uh, sir, if the patient is young, so in case of if we do a just a mammography, uh, the dense breast will we will not be able to clearly identify the lump in a young patient. Then any other added advantage of a sonomammography, elderly patient? There is a cystic lesion. It can identify clearly with a solid and cystic. It can differentiate easily. Any other uh, relevant point which will be adding in diagnosis of a malignant lung? What about the vascularity? Increased uh, vascularity will be there, sir. Okay. So, how do you interpret a mammogram? In this patient also, mammogram must have been done. Yes, sir. What are the headings you see in the mammogram? Uh, sir, first, uh, sir, uh, we, see, uh, we see the uh, skin thickness in the mammogram. If the skin is uh, thickened, it can suggest edema. Then a lump. The lump uh, appears a discrete lump with irregular margins and speculated margins are there with a mic uh, micro calcifications. And uh, in a uh, mediolateral oblique view, we will also look for lymph nodes in the axilla. No, about the mass, exactly what you interpret in a mass. So that, what is a biliar scoring? What is the full form of that? Sir, breast image reporting and uh, sir, data systems. So they interpret that and they give in particular heading, what is that? What is the homogeneity or heterogeneous lesion? Then they say about the margin. Then they say about stippled calcification or Particularly, what is the calcification which, if present, is more suggestive of malignancy in case of a mammogram? So what, is you... what is micro calcification? What is the meaning of that? Clustered micro yes. calcification. What is the meaning of this? No. Clustered means it's a group. Of, yes, sir. So, how many calcifications to be present? More than five calcifications, micro calcifications within a one cubic centimeter area. Got it? Okay, you told something about the ultrasonography of the axilla. Yes. yes, sir. So, can you just uh, suggest some findings in the ultrasonography of the axilla, which will be more hinting towards a malignant probably lymph node or a positive lymph node. What are the findings you will be getting? Sir, it will be a solid and taller than white with a loss of fatty hilum and rounded. What is significant lymph node in axilla? It is rounded with loss of fatty hilum. What is your size? Size. size. What is the significant adenopathy in neck and axilla, then groin? I don't know, sir. One centimeter, one centimeter. Groin is 1.5 centimeter. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. Prakash, I'll ask him a very sir. simple question. Sir, sir please. On, on clinical examination of a breast lump, how do you differentiate between whether this is carcinoma or sarcoma? Do you understand my question? Yes, sir. Yes. You have a patient who comes with you with a lump which is, you know, degraded the skin and she is in front of you. How do you clinically diagnose this is sarcoma or carcinoma? During the discussion, It was told to you that carcinoma actually infiltrates the skin. How yes. does sarcoma come up? Yes, sir, sarcoma also locally infiltrates and come up and it is mainly uh, purplish to 
uh, purplish in color with vascularity. Carcinoma is because of pressure necrosis and Pressure. infiltration. Sarcoma never infiltrates epithelial lesions. So can you go back to embryology and tell me That's that's your homework. Yes. Thank you. Abhijit. Yes. Is there any role of MRI? Sir, if uh, if the patient has an implant, then uh, MRI is useful, sir. Also, uh, in cases of recurrence, if we want to differentiate that it is a scar of previous tissue or a recurrence, then also young breasts look, uh, yeah, for young uh, female, young breasts, we can go for MRI, sir. Okay, good. So, theoretically, you are a little uh, well read. So, something about the next the triple assessment, you will be going in for a biopsy rather. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. So, which biopsy will you prefer? Core needle biopsy. Core needle. So, what is the size of the needle we will you prefer? No, uh, sir. Fourteen gauge of needles. Fourteen to sixteen. Okay. So, what will the added advantage of a true cut? See, many people are doing FNHC also. Will you also recommend the same? Uh, sir, uh, true cut has a wide bone needles and so tissues uh, tissue is more, sir. So we can differentiate between an invasive and an in situ. Also, we can do uh, ERPR and HER2 new status, immunohistochemistry of the lesion as well. Sir. Good. So nuclear grading also can be found out from that. Okay. Something related to this uh, biopsy. So it is a very small uh, lesion and mammography, you are seeing a clustered calcification, but in a very small area. So any particular type of again, biopsy, you know, which can address this? Sir, new not viable. Uh, sir, vacuum assisted uh, breast biopsy? Yes. Called? Other name for that? Mammotom. Yes. It is helping in that. Okay, something related to the ER, PR, and HER2 new status. So, what is this luminal classification? Do you know theoretically? Yes, sir. So, uh, ER, PR, all HER2 is positive. Which one will, will be? Sir, luminal A or luminal B both have ER, PR, and HER2 new positive status. Sir. Luminal A is also HER2 new positive? And B is also positive, sir. HER2 positive? In yes. A? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then what is the difference between them? So, KI 67, which uh, is low in A and high in B, sir. sir. Is he correct, sir? Luminal A, I believe that it is hard to negative. Okay, please check it. Yes, sir. Now, you told that all the you did the triple assessment and uh, you are confirming that it's the case of a malignant lump. Any metastatic workup will you like to do in this case particularly? Uh, sir, my case is a locally advanced breast uh, cancer. So, I we have to do a metastatic workup. Uh, for uh, for metastatic workup, we will do a blood investigation, uh, uh, which will include a complete blood count and uh, LFT with ALP, sir. Uh, also, uh, sir, ALP, what will you get, sir? If it is raised, it can signify then that it can be a malignant. Malignant means what? Where is the malignancy metastasis? Uh, to the sir, uh, uh, biliary, uh, liver. It can also be arising from any other uh, area. Leave aside the liver. Uh, Alkaline phosphate is secreted from liver and anything else? For bones also. Yes, why do you need doubt? So, yes. how do you differentiate between the two? Uh, sir, we will go for a, uh, a CT abdo pelvis thorax and also a bone scan. So, it will. Can you differentiate between the alkaline phosphatase from the liver and from the bone? Biochemically. I don't know, sir. One is heat labile, one is heat stable. Okay, sir.
then thereafter what will you do metastatic workup Uh, sir, I I will go for a chest X-ray and ultrasonography with sir uh, CT abdo pelvis thorax is done sir to. So anything about the bone scan? Will you yes. like to go? CT abdo pelvis thorax with the bone scan, sir. When is a bone scan indicated? Uh, sir, in locally advanced breast carcinomas, uh, it is indicated, sir. We also, if Uh, the patient is a case of early breast carcinoma and symptomatic uh, with the bone pain, then it is indicated. Sir. Good. So, is there any role of PET scan? Will you do or not? Sir, uh, it can also be done, sir. In all cases, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, 4? In early breast cancers, uh, PET CT is not recommended. In locally advanced, uh, it is done for metastatic. So is it mandatory in as per the NCCN guideline that we should go in for a PET scan? No, or when should it be done? Not mandatory, sir. So why it is not uh, useful in case of breast carcinoma? Uh, sir, because PET CT cannot show uh, brain mets. For smaller liver lesion, it is not that sensitive. Got it? For bones, yes, it can show. But for the liver lesion, smaller one. It cannot so. Okay? Okay, sir. So, in your case, how do you manage now? So, you have done the metastatic workup and the tumor you showed that is your T4B. Yes, sir. N? N2. N2. Now, how do you approach in this case? Management. Uh, sir, uh, since it is a locally advanced, uh, we will first go for a new adjuvant uh, chemotherapy, sir. Neo chemotherapy. What are the different regimens you know? Uh, sir, uh, neo adjuvant therapy is uh, uh, sir, cyclophosphamide, adriamycin, and 5 fluorouracil, uh, or uh, cyclophosphamide, methotrexate, and 5 fluorouracil. So, well, it is not responding. How will you see the response to the chemotherapy? How do you assess it? Uh, there is a resist criteria. After Two, week, two cycles of a neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we will assess the patient based on the resist criteria. And if we have a response, then we will continue with the chemotherapy, finish it, and then proceed with the surgery. If there is no response, we will do the surgery first, and uh, then it will be followed by adjuvant. Uh... But in this large uh, tumor, will you be proceeding with the surgery? We will, sir, do with a uh, uh, chemotherapy first, sir. So, chemotherapy not responding. Can we change the chemotherapy? Yes, sir. We can change to second line chemotherapy. Also. What are those? Uh, they are taxins, sir. Like yes. yes, they can be tried. Yes, sir. Okay. So, something related to this inflammatory breast carcinoma, have you heard about it? Yes, sir. Okay. How you diagnose clinically inflammatory breast carcinoma? Because the commonest differential diagnosis in inflammatory breast carcinoma is? Uh, it is a locally advanced, uh, it is a differential. Locally advanced or it's a case of a just a memory abscess or any just inflammatory condition? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, patient will have a short history, like uh, up to three months. And she will have edema, redness over the breast. Uh, on clinical examination, PUD orange will be uh, um, it will be there, it will be present, and it could be possible then that the patient could be uh, have a palpable lump or could not also have a lump with or without a palpable lump. So, in case of inflammatory breast carcinoma, you want to say there will be a palpable lump? It it may it may be present or may not be, sir. Usually not. So, how to diagnose in this case? So, what will be this inflammation usually? Occupying almost the entire breast or small breast? Of the sir, breast. Almost two thirds of the skin of the breast or the area of the breast in a short span of time. How uh, do you diagnose this group of malignancies? Uh, sir, we, uh, we go for a mammosono with, uh, with sir, uh, we have to uh, do a skin, uh, we do a biopsy, sir. For Which breast? Coordinate and 
you told skin punch biopsy yes sir punch biopsy okay sir khana sir any question sir from your side abhijit what did you say what is sono mammography sir it is combined uh, sir uh, it is combined mammography with uh, ultrasonography of the breast sir. are you sure about that it's a combined thing what machine is used for the sonography and what machine is used for the mammography what is the basic principle for that these two machines mammography is an x ray sir and sonography is uh, sir ultrasonography so so it is not a combination of that okay simple ultrasound which is done for the breast is called as sonomammography it's a high resolution ultrasound of the breast so you are not combining the two things okay sir okay so the sonomammography though it is called as sonomammography you might be thinking it's a combination of the ultrasound and the mammography not it is the same it is only the ultrasound which is there a high resolution ultrasound is used for the and that is called as sonomammography yes sir okay now you know again and again the question was coming how will you differentiate if there is a pressure necrosis ulcer is there or this is a infiltrative ulcer is there so which test clinically you can do you can do a what is called a probe test okay, okay. so you can put a probe in the case of a if it is because of pressure necrosis it will go underneath the skin like a case of a pressure necrosis because of philots tumor if it is there but if it is the malignant infiltration because the carcinoma is there then in that case you cannot do the probe inside and it will not go underneath the skin okay sir okay now why you do not do the pet scan in the case of the carcinoma breast the reason is not that you are not able to pick up the hepatics and the old you can very well pick up the hepatic and the brain metastasis in the pet scan the reason is the false positive results which are there okay it is because of the over activation which is there so even if some patient had a like any inflammatory lesion is there okay somebody had an inflammation somewhere this will be taken up by the pet scan and you will start treating that pet scan thinking it's a metastatic lesion yes and that is why you do not do the metast the pet scan as a working for the diagnosis of the carcinoma or staging for the carcinoma breast okay what yes. are the advantages of doing that new adjuvant chemotherapy for these patients or any new adjuvant treatment what are the advantages uh, sir it it can it can decrease the it can lead to a decrease in the size of the tumor and if it is a large inoperable tumor it can uh, cause uh it to be operable sir yes. also uh, it can decrease uh, the lymph it can act on the lymph node and can decrease the size of the lymph nodes yes and uh, the planes can are better uh, made also sir it reduces the uh, systemic spread it acts on systemically so reduces the metast uh, sir metastasis it takes care of the micro metastasis yes. Yes, sir. Okay, that is the most important thing. You know that what are the various theories of the spread of the breast cancer? How does the breast cancer metastasize? You know what is the Hallstadian theory and what is the Fisher theory? Yes, sir. I cannot recall it, sir. Okay, Hallstadian. You know the Hallstatt. Yes, sir. Okay, so that Hallstatt, his surgeon, he said that that the breast cancer is a local regional disease. It will first involve the breast, then it will go to the axilla, and then it will go to the systemic disease. But then the Fisher concept came that from the day one, it is a systemic disease. It has been proved that. breast cancer is a systemic disease and not a local regional disease but i think both were not correct and then the third theory came what is called a spectrum theory in the spectrum theory 
both the things are there that it is a local regional spread as well as a systemic spread. And that is why all the breast cancers are treated by all these ways, which can tackle by the systemic route, it can tackle by the local route. And that is the biggest advantage of new agent chemotherapy that apart from making the tumor operable, it takes care of the micrometastasis, which you can never pick. Yes. Okay, so that is why you give the patient new adjunct chemotherapy. And then because of local regional, you give the patient the surgical yeah. treatment. Yeah. Okay, so that is the reason that you are combined that. You know how much time does it take to make a one centimeter palpable tumor of the breast? For how many days the patient is harboring the cancer? No, sir, I don't know. Okay. It depends on the tumor doubling time. Any idea of the tumor doubling time of the breast cancer? Okay. Mm. It's around 100 days. Okay. Around 100 days is the tumor doubling time. And it takes 5 years to metastasize from one cell, getting 2 cells, 2 cells, getting 4 cells. It takes around 30 metastasis, 30 doublings which are there. And for the 30 doubling, it is the five years period which is there. So even for just a palpable one centimeter tumor, it's already there for five years. And that is why it is thought as a systemic disease because it has been shown that even if the tumor is not palpable, it's only the 20 second doubling which is there, it can metastasize. Today you go to your hostel there and calculate that one becoming two, two becoming four, four becoming so. Try to calculate that and you find that it is the 30th doubling which is there when it becomes a centimeter. Okay, that is why these all concepts came or the Fisher concept and the Hallstadian concept and the combination concept which is there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Kanagawal, can we... Dr. Amit, you want to say Yes, something? sir. Abhijit, do you have any doubts to be clarified, Abhijit? Mm. Sir, I have to read better and I have to be clinically more sound. So, that is a message, and uh, every one of the residents should improve upon where you are lagging with today's questions from the faculty. Nothing like you should feel bad. You have done definitely well. There are always avenues to improve. The lacunas are pointed out by the senior faculty here. And you should spend time, make note of all the areas where you are a little weak or a little less confident. Go back to the library and uh, sit back and update your knowledge. That is what is expected. Do you have any doubts to clarify with such a senior faculty available? Do you have any doubts when you are preparing? You should definitely have come across issues which you are not able to answer or little dubious or something. Uh, sir, I had doubt regarding sir malignant phyloids and sarcoma uh, differential with uh, sir L L locally, locally advanced. Sir. I could not find it, sir. Anyways. Dr. Dalvi there. Okay, I will just tell you that, you know, sarcomas which are there, they do not matter size to the lymph nodes. So yes. if the big tumor is there and you are not finding any lymph node, aggregate lymph nodes, then you should suspect the patient is having the sarcoma. Second is the sarcomas are usually big tumors as compared to the carcinoma. They are small tumors and even if the small tumor is there, they can matter size you. Third is the type of the skin which is there over that. Usually over the sarcoma, it's a very shining skin is there, which is not there in the carcinoma. Fourth is the presence of the veins which are there. If you find the presence of veins over the breast, then that may suggest it's a sarcoma. So these are the few ways by which you can differentiate. That is it. And usually the sarcoma is not fixed to the chest wall. While a carcinoma can be fixed to the chest wall. So by these things, you can... Think probably the patient is having the, and I told you about the, if it is a fungating one, which is there, the probe test, which is there, by which you can differentiate between these two. Thank you, sir. One homework I'll give you. So, international breast cancer, actually, if you see our nurse program or something, uh, there's a pink ribbon over there, symbol. What does yes. it look like? No idea. No, no, sir. Find out. Okay. That's yes. the homework. Okay, good.
thank you uh, esteemed faculty thank you abhijit uh, thank you yoga priya and other senior faculty here uh, thanks prakash sir and uh, thanks for kindly accepting a very short invitation professor amit sir thank you for contributing the pg anna sir and our own faculty for uh, <coughs> being staying with us week after week so thank you very much next week we will be having neck uh, cases we have a case of tb lymphadenitis and probably one more oral cancer that's the plan for the next week good luck to you thank you one and all good night good night good night With the permission of the faculty i sign off thank you very much